dropping. It's the police. You won't hurt me. Oh, yeah? Why not? Because you're a policeman. There are rules for policemen. Yeah. That's what my captain keeps telling me. At the end of the day, I think we might be seeing a cage match between Harrison Ford and Bruce Willis based on our top 100 list. We're at number 33, and we are talking about Die Hard. We're talking about the first one, mm. but of course, we may delve a little bit into Die Hard 2 and 3, and then not so much on what has come since then. Yeah, you like 2 and 3. I I'm did. not very fond I, well, of 2 and 3. 2 is not the greatest. It's more just like an airport version of Nakatomi Plaza, but I like 3. You got a problem with that? No. This idea of one man versus an army of Euro trash Not guys. Not just one with, man, one New York cop. Yeah, and you know, no shoes. he has that great sequence at the beginning when he's like scrunching his toes yeah. into the carpet. And for some reason, it was a one-to-one -one relationship with me to him as a viewer yeah, to this action yeah. hero yeah. after he does that. And him not having shoes is such a huge part of this because it connects him literally to the ground underneath him. Better be called your pants down, huh? In this building that is all about getting away from the ground as far as possible. Well, it was also a kind of a poke in the eye at the invulnerability of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sly Stallone. You are most troublesome for a security guard. <laughs> Sorry, Hans, wrong guess. Would you like to go for double jeopardy where the scores can really change? And honestly, I mean, very few actors in that time could have done this role justice. This guy was perfectly cast as John McClane. The whole thing wouldn't work at all, though, if Alan Rickman wasn't so good yeah. as this incredible villain. And when Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. What a performance what, from this guy. You know, what a great use and command of the language that he's able to kind of create this crazy accent. I don't even know what nationality he's playing, but it's I don't the, think he even knows. It's the Alan Rickman accent, and it's perfect, and he is so villainous. He's just awesome to watch on screen. I'm going to count to three. Yeah. Like you did with Takagi. That chemistry between these two actors is just transcendent. It's so wonderful. And of course, we talked about Die Hard and its sequels a little bit on the show. Let's take a look back. Die Hard is flawless. It is considered the birth of the modern action movie where yeah. when people shoot at him, yeah, a lot of the bullets miss, but sometimes they hit him. John McClane's been shot like 45 times over the last 25 years. He's incredible. Yippee ki mother the other thing I love about Die Hard is its simplicity and the fact that it takes place in one building over one night and they really set the plot and the pacing up so that it was non-stop, it was relentless, it never lets you off the hook for a minute in the best way. My feelings about the first Die Hard are widely known around the world love it. Die Hard 2 for me is the one true sequel in the franchise where this movie has no real reason to exist. It doesn't have its own real story. It's basically like, let's take the first movie and just make it bigger. It's entertaining as all heck, and Dennis Franz is in it, and he yells a lot, Dennis and I like Franz that. Dennis Franz is in it. McLean, what the hell you think you're doing out there? I'm playing John Wayne. How'd you like to spend the rest of the night in a cell? There's no one movie in this collection where I'm like, wow, the, I hate seeing this movie. Yeah. I hate every minute of it. But this is definitely not one of the most enjoyable experiences on this disc. Still, definitely an important film to see, even if you just want to understand the sequel mentality in the late 80s, early 90s, because it's different now. Today is the day we take a look at Die Hard with a Vengeance. Bad idea. Die Hard with a Vengeance, one of my all-time favorite sequels. I think it's fantastic just as a standalone movie. Mm -hmm. The story of it is very compelling and very exciting. The action pieces are phenomenal. I think Jeremy Irons is such a He's fantastic great. villain. And the situations he creates are things I've never forgotten since I first saw this movie. Like, I know how to get exactly four gallons into a five-gallon jug. <laughs> good, good, good. Exactly McLean. four gallons. You did it, McLean. Put it on the bed. Get it down there. And it's also a perfect Christmas movie that you can watch every year oh, as well. I love Christmas movies. Listen, yeah. I just figured out my Halloween costume. I'm going to go as John McClane and Die Hard. Very nice. Just yeah. a tank top just and some sweat and blood. And my sense of ingenuity. There you go. He really is the first MacGyver. Congratulations, John McClane and the Die Hard series. You are number 33 on our list.